Hey guys, the subject of today's video is my hair. Lots of questions lately, figured I would just compile everything into one video and touch all the bases. Hair growth, hair coloring, um, everyday hair routine, all the good stuff. It's been a minute since I sat down and filmed a video, so I'm sure you guys are all sitting there thinking, since when did your hair get that long? June 2021. I posted on Instagram that I was thinking about growing my hair out, and I thought it'd be really funny if I was like, place your bets, how long you think I'll last? Because historically, I've pretty much always had chin like hair. So I don't think anybody actually expected me to grow it out properly, and in their defense, neither did I. Um, but then people were saying, I give it a week, one month tops, and now I have to keep going out of pure spite. Probably I'll never cut it again. The goal is Rapunzel, and we're getting there. Um, my hair is currently at my lower back. I would say that's quite a feat, but I'm actually pretty sure that's just the average amount your hair is supposed to grow within that time frame. We're coming up on three years, so it's been a while. I didn't do anything specific for hair growth. I kind of just stopped cutting it and let it rip, you know what I mean? I didn't use any- hello? I didn't use any um, specific hair growth products like serums, um, masks, supplements, anything like that, but I do have a few tips and tricks or things that I kind of think aided in my hair growth journey, if you will. Step one no heat. I can hear your hearts shattering through the screen, but yeah, I don't use any heat in my hair, just kind of let it air dry. I think that that probably was a big factor into my hair growth because no heat means a lot less damage. Less damage means less split ends, which actually leads me into the second thing, which is managing your split ends. A lot of people, you know, we've all heard you should get regular trims on your hair, cut off like a centimeter or something like that at the bottom. Personally, I didn't do that. I didn't get regular trims, but I did regularly trim my split ends individually, which sounds extreme and very tedious, but I barely have any hair. My hair is extremely thin and extremely fine, so it's not difficult to sort through all of it. I guess. But basically what I do is every time that I'm going to wash my hair before I get in the shower, I brush it out and then I kind of just examine the ends and every time I see a split end, I chop it off. And that way I'm like getting rid of the damage, but I'm not losing excess length. If you have straight hair or you often wear your hair straightened, might not be the technique for you because pretty sure that the ends of my hair are all slightly different lengths, but my hair is wavy, curly, so you can't tell. If you feel like your hair never really grows past a certain length, like past your shoulders, um, it's probably split ends because it is growing, it's just breaking off at the same speed, and so it looks like it's not going anywhere. I genuinely think that if there's one thing that you should focus on when you're growing out your hair, it's the split ends because they will be your downfall. Third thing, water hardness level. Check the water hardness level for where you live. Basically, it's just that there are minerals in the water and sometimes they're harsher in certain locations than they are in others. So for example, I was born and raised in Southern California. I grew up there majority of my life. When I lived in Southern California, my hair was dry and very thin and it broke off easily. It didn't grow very long. And then I moved. I moved to New England, East Coast, USA, by the way. For some reason, so many people think I live in the UK, um, New England in America. But anyways, I moved here and suddenly my hair was softer it grew faster, it felt thicker. I learned about water hardness, looked up the levels. Where I was living in Southern California, 230. Where I live currently, 60. If you feel like your hair is suffering where you 
live on a daily basis and then you go on vacation and your hair is suddenly thriving maybe something to look into you can buy those shower head filters um, or you can just move okay moving on cut um, I cut my hair myself um, if that was not blatantly obvious already I kind of just grab scissors and go at it you know what I mean I do a blunt cut because I like the ends to be just one uniform length and then I add in a few layers um, truly microscopic on the layers because again barely any hair on this head so my layers are this this is a layer do you see how there's no hair <laughs> i have to do really really tiny layers because if i do like normal layers basically i'll have like two strands of hair left at the end and it's just not gonna be a good look for me so i do very very small layers i do one shorter one that's like chin length i do a, a medium one somewhere right there and then the ends of my hair um, just to add a little bit of volume, but yeah. And then I cut my bangs and I cut some face, fate, f face framing pieces. <laughs> the hair coloring. Let's get into this because I recently lightened my hair and I've been getting a lot of questions on how I went about it or what color I used. Unfortunately, it's not a box dye situation, um, but it's still... It was still relatively easy, so I'll walk you through it. It was a two-step process. Step one, bleach bath. I know you heard the word bleach and you started running for the hills, but reel it back in. It's, I promise it's not that complex. You mix your bleach, one part bleach, two parts developer, and then you add one part shampoo. And instead of applying it on dry hair as you normally would, you apply it on wet hair. So the wet hair plus the shampoo means it's like a lot more diluted than normal it's less harsh it doesn't lighten as drastically i applied the bleach bath to the ends of my hair like from here down i really saturated it at the ends and then when i got up here i kind of i used a lighter hand i didn't drench it as much i let that sit for like 20 minutes and then right at the end right at the very end I brought it up to my roots. I did not saturate the roots. I just kind of dipped my gloved fingers into the bleach bath and then kind of brushed it up to the roots because your roots lighten a lot faster because of the heat from your scalp. And I did not want my roots to be lighter than the rest of my hair. In fact, I kind of wanted the opposite. I wanted my roots to be slightly darker and it to have a very gradual gradient, so that's how I did it. Washed the bleach out, and then my hair was lightened a few shades. I'll insert a photo so you can see. It was lighter, but it was very copper, as brown usually is when you lighten it because brown has red and orange undertones. So step two, color deposit. Color deposit is, was essentially just to tone down the ginger because I wanted it to still be that light of a shade, I just didn't want it to be so warm toned. So you may be thinking, this is where you grab a brown dye and you slap it on there. No. Step away from the brown dye. It never ends well, guys. Brown dye is notoriously unpredictable. Um, if I would have put brown dye on after that bleach bath, we would have been right back to square one. Like, pitch black hair, pretty much. What I ended up putting on there color-wise was Neutral Medium Blonde. Neutral Medium Blonde to get it to the shade that it currently is because the neutral part of it was going to tone down a little bit of the warmth without taking the warmth out completely. You know, if you're trying to tone down the warmth in your hair, you usually go for like an ash color. Um, the neutral, again, take out some of the warmth, but not all of the and then medium blonde means that it wasn't going to change the lightness of my hair. It wasn't going to make it any lighter, but it wasn't going to make it any darker either. 
Um, I just followed the instructions for color deposit and slapped that on there. And this is what we got. It, it turned out exactly how I wanted it to, a very warm toned, chocolatey brown. And then for my blonde streak, I always get a lot of questions about that as well. Just your average bleach process for that one, but if I could give you guys any advice, it's do not overlap your bleach. I bleach my roots when they've grown out like about a centimeter because if they grow out any longer than a centimeter, then that's when you start to get like banding discoloration. So I pretty much aim for a centimeter of growth and then I will just slap some bleach on. I only put the bleach on the brown. I only put the bleach on the roots. I never overlap it onto the blonde. Wash it out, you know the process. And then I put my toner on. I use the Wella Color Charm T18 toner and I only put this where I just bleached. So if I'm not putting bleach and I'm not putting toner onto the blonde, how do I keep it so white? I hear you asking. Purple shampoo. Um, I use purple shampoo like a hair mask, so when I'm gonna wash my hair before I get into the shower, I'll usually put purple shampoo all through my blonde, and then I leave it in for like three minutes, and then I wash it out. And that tones down any yellow, any brassiness, but it doesn't do any damage because again, it's just purple shampoo. Moving on, everyday hair routine and products that I use, this is gonna be, I think, pretty anticlimactic because I'm very lazy. I'm very lazy when it comes to my hair. So basically, um, I wash my hair. The shampoo and conditioner that I use is nothing special. Like there's, a, there's not really any rhyme or reason as to why I use these specific ones. I use this Dove shampoo because it smells good. That's it. I use this Dove shampoo because I like the way it smells. I have used like curly girl shampoos, sulfate free shampoos, stuff like that in the past. And to be honest, I don't think they did anything. I didn't notice any difference in my hair at all. So I don't use those anymore. I just use whatever. And then for conditioner, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. So I'll just insert B-roll footage, but nothing particularly special. But yeah, I do think it makes my hair very soft. So when I get out of the shower, I just put a curl oil into the ends of my hair and just brush that through with my fingers and then sometimes I will use a sea salt spray if I want to like give it a bit more texture. I actually don't know if it does anything but once again it smells good so I use it. That's all that I put into my hair. I try not to put a lot of product in there because again thin hair, fine hair, it gets weighed down really, really easily. And then I just let it air dry. And that's it. I started hair oiling like a month ago, I want to say, and I just bought this cheap hair oil from Walmart. It's like 99 cents or something like that. Before I'm getting in the shower, I will put this oil in the ends of my hair and the roots of my hair, and I'll just leave it on for like an hour before I get into the shower. I think this has helped my hair. I can't say for sure, but I feel like I have noticed more baby hairs around my temples, so I wanna say it's because of the hair oiling. I think I'm gonna do a hairstyles video soon to show you guys how I've been styling it now that it's long enough to actually do fun things with it. Um, so, okay. I think I covered everything in regards to my hair. If you have any additional questions, you can comment them. Um, there's a 2% chance that I'll answer. So, hope that helps.